Well, El Nino is the opposite of La Nina, which is the phase, of course, we've seen through the past three years. El Nino refers to a warming of the sea surface temperatures along the equator across the Pacific. Now, when those waters warm up, it actually changes weather patterns around the globe. For example, typically you have easterly winds blowing across the tropics towards Australia. Now, that leads to convection and rain around Australian longitudes. That's the normal pattern. This is what happens during El Nino. Those easterly winds weaken or occasionally even reverse and they become westerly. So that takes rainfall away from Australia and moves it more towards the central and the eastern parts of the Pacific. So then why is the US far more confident than our bureau that El, El Nino will form? Yeah, so Joe, part of it is the definitions between the two organisations of what El Nino is and the thresholds aren't exactly the same. But I'm leaning more towards what the US government is predicting at the moment, which is up to an 80% chance of El Nino developing later this year. Now, currently our bureau have an El Nino watch in place. That refers to roughly a 50% chance of El Nino developing this year. But there's been a few changes just in the last few weeks. Firstly, these are the current sea surface temperature anomalies. Look what's happening off the west coast of South America. It's about five degrees warmer than normal. Now that is often the precursor for El Nino because that warm water can then spread further towards the west along the equatorial Pacific. Another reason is just below the surface of the Pacific, there's a tongue of warm water right now and often that will extend towards the surface over the next couple of weeks or months. Another reason is this. These are seven leading global models. Now, this is the forecast for the Pacific sea surface temperatures. By September, all seven firmly in El Nino territory. So that's why the US government has that very high risk of El Nino forming this year, Joe. So if we do go into El Nino, what is the likely impact on Australia's weather patterns? Yeah, so typically when we have El Ninos, our rainfall is below average, but it's not the equal opposite of La Nina. Now, during a La Nina, for example, in New South Wales, we see a 25% increase in rainfall. During El Nino, the reduction in rainfall is, is only 15%. Now, the reason the impact of El Nino is not quite as high as La Nina is because for Australia, it's mainly only winter and spring where we see that influence. But La Nina, it'll last right through the summer into the autumn. What's very important to remember though, is that not all El Ninos are the same. And there are other climate drivers that El Nino competes with. Here's an example. The last one was eight years ago. This, these are the rain deciles in 2015. Most of Australia had close to average rain, even though it was one of the strongest El Ninos on record. We can see we even had above average rain for parts of New South Wales, the Northern Territory, and many parts of Western Australia. So even if we do see El Nino develop, it doesn't guarantee that rainfall will be below average, Joe.